This is part 9 of JavaScript with ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss register startup script and register client script block methods. Both of these methods are used to add JavaScript to ASP.NET pages. First, let's look at register startup script method. This method places the JavaScript at the bottom of the page just before the closing form element. There are two overloaded versions of this method. The first overloaded version has three parameters and the second overloaded version has four parameters. Let's look at an example now. On this web form, I have an ASP.NET text box control. Within this text box control, we want to display the client side date and time. Since we want to display the client side date and time, we will have to do that using JavaScript. So let's add JavaScript to this ASP.NET page using this register startup script method. So let's get to the code behind file. In the page load event, I'm going to make use of this client script class which has got this register startup script method. Notice there are two overloaded versions of this method. At the moment we are using the first overloaded version and this has got three parameters. The first parameter is the type parameter which specifies the type of startup script that we want to register. Since we are using JavaScript here to display the client side date and time in the text box control, let's get the type of text box control that's present on this page. And for that, I'm going to use text box 1, which is the instance of text box that we have on this page. And on this instance, I'm going to call getType method, which is going to return us the type of text box 1 control, which is nothing but text box class. The second parameter is the key for our script. This can be any string as long as it is unique. So I'm going to specify client script as the key. And the third parameter is the actual script. Let's actually move this third parameter to the next line. So the first thing here is to generate the script element. So script type equals text slash JavaScript. And this word text slash JavaScript need to be in double quotes and double quotes have a special meaning inside the context of a string. So we need to escape the double quote with a backslash and another double quote with another backslash. And then we need to close the angular bracket and then our actual JavaScript document dot get element by ID. And to this function we need to pass the ID of the text box control which is text box one. And within the text box control, we want to display the client side date and time. To get the client side current date and time, we can use the date constructor function. And then finally, we need to close the script element. So at the moment, if you look at this ASPX page, we don't have any JavaScript whatsoever. And within the code behind file, we are calling this register startup script method. So let's go ahead and run this and when the page loads, we expect the client side date and time to be displayed in the text box control and when we view the source of this page, notice that the script element is placed just before the closing form element. And in this example, we're using the first overloaded version of this register startup script method which has three parameters. If you look at the second overloaded version, notice that there's a fourth parameter of type boolean, which says add script tags. And I'm going to specify true for that method, I mean for that parameter. So when we specify true for that fourth parameter, add script tags, it's going to generate this script tag for us. So there is no need to hard code that within this string. So it's going to generate the script tag and this JavaScript will be placed inside that script element. So when we run this, this should work exactly the same way. And when we view the source, notice that we have the script element just before the closing form element. So the type parameter is used to specify the type of startup script that we want to register. When you register a client script, you cannot use the same key and type. They are considered duplicates. The type parameter allows us to use the same key value across different types of controls. Let's understand this statement with an example. So let's make a copy of this. And on the page, let's include a label control as well. So what we want to do is within the text box and label control, we want to display the client side date and time. And 
so we want the second script block to you know include a JavaScript which is going to display the date and time in the label control so here I'm going to specify the type of label so label one dot get type and within label control so just to uh, display something within the label control we have to use inner HTML property okay so here the types are different but we are using the same key okay so as long as one of them is different the uniqueness is maintained and this code should work so we should see the client side date and time both within the text box and label control okay so that's text box and that's label control now let's see what's going to happen if we use the same type and key so in both the cases we are using label one dot get type which is going to return label as the type and the key is client script now when we do this only one of them is going to work so the date and time will be displayed within the text box control but not within the text box uh, label control okay so you have to ensure that you know the type and key combination is unique so here is an example of using register startup script method with register startup script the JavaScript will be placed just before the closing form element now let's look at an example of using register client script block method this method is very similar to register startup script method except that this method places JavaScript after the opening form element but before the HTML elements are loaded into the browser DOM let's understand this with an example let's look at a slightly different example now what we want to do is as we type into this text box the number of characters that we have typed we want to display that count in this label control so I'm going to get rid of the second block of code and we actually want this JavaScript to be encapsulated inside a function so I'm going to create a function and let's name this get character count open the curly brace document dot get element by ID and the ID of the label control is label one dot in a HTML equals document dot get element by id text box one dot value dot length that should give us the number of characters within the text box and we are displaying that within this label control and we don't need this anymore and we need to close the curly brace okay so let's go ahead and run this we need to remove this so let's go ahead and run this now as we type into the text box the number of characters should be displayed within the label control so for some reason it's not displaying and that's basically because we have defined our function but we are not calling that so we need to call that function so get character count is the name of the function on key up event of this text box control we need to call the JavaScript function that we have just defined which is get character count so we have the name of the function here but the JavaScript function itself will be added to this page by ASP.NET at runtime so let's go ahead and run this and as we type into this text box look at that the count is displayed in the label so it's working as expected now when we view the source look at that we have the script element the script element is placed just before the close uh, closing form element that's because we are using register startup script method now let's use register client script block and run this now the example is going to work the same way but if you look at where the script tag is placed look at that the script tag is present here after this form element but before 
these HTML elements, that is our text box and label controls, okay, before these elements the script is present. So that means the script, you know, since the script is present before these HTML elements, now this script is actually encapsulated inside a function. And then we are calling that function on key up event. Okay, that's why we don't have a problem here. But imagine we have some JavaScript which runs as the page loads. What is going to happen if we have that kind of a script here? It's going to throw a null reference error. We'll look at an example of that in just a bit, if that doesn't make sense at the moment. Okay, so that's register client script block method. It's very identical to register startup script, except that it places the JavaScript after the opening form element, but before the HTML elements are loaded into DOM. And here is the generated JavaScript. So what are the differences between register startup script and register client script block methods and when to use one over the other? This is a very important interview question as well. And by now you would have already guessed one of the main differences is that register startup script method places JavaScript just before the closing form element, that is after all the HTML elements are loaded into the browser DOM. Register client script block does the opposite. It places the JavaScript you know, immediately after the opening form element, that is, before all the HTML elements are loaded into the browser DOM. This could have a significant impact depending on the type of script that you have. Let's understand that with an example. Let's say within this text box control, we want to display the client side date and time. So let's get rid of this function. So now the JavaScript code that we have it's not encapsulated inside a function. So I'm saying document.getElement by ID, the ID of the text box actually. Let's use this. Document.getElement by ID text box one dot value equals new date. So this should display the current date and time. So here this piece of JavaScript code is not present inside a function. So when the page loads when this script is added to the page, this will be executed on page load, right? And since we don't have a label one control, let's use textbox one dot get type. And instead of using client script block, let's actually use register startup script. Okay. So now, when we run this, it should display the client side date and time in the text box control. And if we view the source, since we are using register startup script the script element is present just before the closing form element. By the time the script is executed, we already have this text box loaded into the browser document object model. So when this script is called, you know, the script can find this text box and it's going to display the current date and time as expected without any problem. So let's close this now. And instead of using, let's get rid of this on key up event. We don't have that function anymore. Now, instead of using this register startup script, I'm going to use register client script block function. Okay, now when we run this, we get a null reference error. Look at that, unable to set property value of undefined or null reference. So why are we getting null reference error? That's because if you view the source, notice that the script is present immediately after this form element. So the script is present before the HTML element text box one. Okay, so by the time the script is executed, this text box one control is not loaded into the browser document object model. Okay, so it cannot find this text box one control. So document.getElement by ID is going to return a null reference, and on that null object we are calling value property. That's why we get that error. Okay, so that's one of the main difference between register startup script and register client script block methods. Use register client script block method for scripts encapsulated in functions and that you don't need to run on page load. Register startup script method can be used for any script even if it's not inside a function. Generally, register startup script method is used for scripts that must run on page load. 
Also keep in mind this register startup script and register client script block methods are also available on the page object but these two are deprecated. Look at this. Here we are calling this register client script block which is present in the client script class but I can also use page dot register startup script and this method has two parameters key and value so key and value let's you know define an empty string there and look at this we have a green squiggly and when I hover the mouse over we get a message saying that you know this is obsolete look at the warning you know system.web.ui.page.register startup script is obsolete the recommended alternative is client script.register startup script you get the same message when you try to use register client script block of the page object so register client script block look at that we get the same error register client script block is obsolete okay Thank you for listening and have a great day.